is Volusia Today, a public information radio program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Good morning and welcome to Volusia Today. I'm David Hunt with the County's Community Information Division. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, the new Community Information Director, Michael Ryan. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Volusia Today is made possible by our sponsors, Daytona Beach International Airport, the Ocean Center, Volusia Recycles, and Botran Public Transportation. So, Michael, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous this morning. I'm hosting this show, but I feel like I'm under the gun. You're the new uh, Community Information Director. Um, You've been on board for about two months now. Uh, it's been a pleasure. A month, two months? How long yeah, have you been? Yeah, I think it's about 34 days, actually. 34 days. Yeah. 34 days of fun, correct? About 30 of those was in the uh, EOC, <laughs> it felt like. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure working with you so far. Um, tell us about yourself, your career. You got two minutes. This is only a 30-minute show, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I uh, graduated from the University of Texas and um, spent a year or two in journalism and then spent about 20 years in governmental communications before uh, doing a little consulting and um, working in the private industry for a while. It's been nice just having your knowledge. You said 20 years of experience in in, in the game and the community information, uh, com- communication uh, arena. So it's been really nice just having your input on the team. You say some things. I'm already learning a lot from you. So it's been great having you so far, and I can't wait to see what, what you do. You're just warming up your seat 34 days, and we already had a... Uh, a hurricane. Tell us a little bit about the hurricane um, and, and how all that went. That's, well, we moved. Uh, I, I uh, lived in St. Augustine, and we moved to Volusia County on Monday night, and I walked into the EOC Tuesday morning, so that was wonderful. The second time I've moved in a hurricane, I also moved in a Hurricane Matthew. Um, so, spent a couple days in the EOC, you know, and I also learned from you, and your your intense eye contact is making me nervous. Oh, uh, see? I'm already can messing look, up. Can you look away? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm already messing up. <laughs> look away, man. <laughs> So no, it was it was a great experience and and um, you know I learned just as much from the team. You guys are an amazing communication team, and I learned just as much from you guys as, as hopefully I contributed. And it was kind of like a, uh, a practice run, right? We were prepared. We were there um, overnight. Uh, we we prepare and we train like it's going to be the worst case scenario. So we're always prepared for everything. Luckily this time. We kind of skirted us. We didn't have any real impacts here in Volusia County. We got super lucky. But tell us a little bit about that, how that training goes and why that's important and why being prepared is important during this time of the year. Well, Dave, that, that is important. And, you know, a lot of the community doesn't know that um, the steps that we go through as a governmental agency to, you know, prepare for the storm during the storm and then also recovery. And we went through the entire exercise. Um, and, and some of it was, there was a legit threat, you know, on Monday and Tuesday. Monday when I was not at the EOC and you guys were because um, I was moving. But there was, there was a real threat that we definitely need to prepare for and it was a good exercise for for us to run you know our drills but also for the community to do the same thing and you know understand what they need to do to prepare and and, you know I think it's worth noting that we're very early into this season right now there's still a couple months left yeah and I think that's the takeaway is uh is be prepared um get your stuff together you you never know during this time of year what's gonna happen what might come our way we're not out of the woods uh be prepared get your kits together get your plan together your family plan uh think about your animals think about what you're going to do if if something does is a direct threat to our area for sure so yeah it was a whirlwind of a week we had that going on and then we have one of the biggest uh beach weekends this weekend so it's it's a labor day weekend coming up and we got to be prepared for that as well right so we got aj miller with the county's uh beach safety and ocean rescue division um and we have tammy malfers in the studio today to kind of give us some tips and kind of get us prepared for the weekend so what do we need to know? Uh, well, uh, this is one of our biggest weekends, um, and it's the unofficial end of the season. Uh, we really don't go out of season on the beach. You know, it's all weather dependent. So right now, um, going into the weekend, we're looking at very hazardous rip current conditions. Uh, we have that surf picking up from those storms out there. Uh, Franklin's still out there uh, giving us some surf. So uh, we just want people to know that it's so important to swim in front of those lifeguard towers. Uh, we um, can't even stress that enough and download our Volusia Beaches app on your smartphone. It has real-time information. Download that app, look at it before you come to the beach and find out where those towers are. AJ? Yeah, we we are going to have, with with the swell, we've got swell building this weekend. So as you make plans for the weekend, pay attention to that. We have 
uh, mid-morning high tide, so there's a good chance the beach is going to be closed for driving because we don't have a traffic lane. Uh, the water is going to be over, so plan for that. Our parks are going to fill up fast. If you want to get there early, get there early uh, and, and be prepared for that. Deputy Chief Malfer said it. Swim in front of a staff lifeguard tower. Uh, visit the Volusia Beaches app. Prepare for the day. Um, the weather is supposed to look beautiful. I didn't see any rain or storms in the forecast, but it is uh, Central Florida, so always be ready for those those quick afternoon storms. And um, we we're, we're got everybody brought in, every, every staff member that we can bring in to prepare for this busy weekend. And remember, that Beach app does have a lot of other information. You can find those off-beach parking areas uh, and all the walkovers. It has a lot of great information, uh, so make sure you download that. Yeah, I feel like that's important to talk about because uh, we talk about plans. We It's good to have a plan for anything you do. It's good to have a plan when you, when you head down to the beach. And that Volusia Beaches app is such an, an amazing tool. I think there's, I don't know, the last time we checked, there was about 50,000 people signed up on, on the app. I think everybody in Volusia County should, should sign up for the Volusia Beaches app. I've lived here my whole life. I go to the beach all the time. I check that app regularly when I'm heading down to the beach. Um, I use it all the time. Yeah, (laughs) it's amazing. It has a little banner on the top that tells you what to look out for, whether it's red flags, uh, hazardous conditions, uh, every beach ramp that's going to every beach access point that's going to be open. Uh, It's just a great, a great tool to to be aware and be able to make that plan. So you don't get frustrated, right? Right. The beach is always changing. And like you said, luckily we didn't have bad impacts on the beach uh, during this hurricane, but we are expecting that high tide, right? Yeah, we are. With with, as far as the damage and and how the the storm affected the beach, we, we actually lucked out. We didn't have crazy big surf during that storm since it came from the West coast of Florida. Um, I was down on the beach at high tide the morning the storm hit, and uh, the water at that max high tide was just hitting the seawall. So of our 1,500 conservation posts, I think we lost about 30, which is extremely minimal. Um, didn't lose a whole lot of sand. So we, the beach actually fared very well leading into this weekend to, to be able to have access for those people coming down to enjoy the holiday. Yeah, and it's not, so we, we harp on rip currents because rip currents are ridiculously dangerous, but there's a lot of other water moving around right there. You uh, mentioned the, what do you call them, lateral currents, the ones that run side of the beach. Tell us a little bit about those as well. Yeah, so we, we, we always talk about rip currents, which is a current of water that flows from the shoreline pulling you out to sea. But one of the biggest things, and we deal with a lot during the summer, is missing, missing children, missing family members because of those lateral currents. And depending on where the swell is coming from or what storm we have coming, it'll be the water will be rushing either north or south along the current. Uh, and like I said, that brings the possibility of, of missing children because what will happen is they get in, they play in the water not realizing they're getting carried up the shoreline. They go to get out to reunite with their families. Everything looks the same if you're not from here. Um, and they get carried down the beach, and it's hard to find their family members. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot happening, and, and the best thing to do is swim in front of those staff lifeguard towers because they also have all that information on, on the back of the, the board, correct? Every they do. It, it's right there, and, and we, we stress everyone that comes down to the beach, get to know our lifeguards, go talk to them, ask them questions about the beach. Don't get offended when they don't make eye contact like, uh, like Dave here was with you, Michael, because they're watching the water. <laughs> so they're not going to be, they're not going to like, lock eyes with you because they do need to watch the water, but they're more than happy to, to answer all your questions about the beach. So you, you are more knowledgeable and you feel safer and more comfortable on our, on our Volusia County beaches. AJ, can you refresh my memory on the uh, color of the flags? Yeah. So we, uh, starting off, we've got green flag, which is no, um, no danger, which we have never flown on our beach does not have, exist right yeah such yeah, a dynamic yeah. beach that, that beach, our, our yeah. beaches change uh, within a couple that hours. flags in a box somewhere isn't it we have a <laughs> yeah. massive yeah. amount of those flags hiding in a closet yeah. <laughs> yeah now we have yellow for moderate surf conditions um usually when uh the water looks a little calmer but there's still some underlying dangers uh, we have our red flag for dangerous surf conditions or high surf advisory and that doesn't always mean that we don't have to have big surf to have that red flag if, if our rip currents are pulling real strong as they are now today we're flying that red flag we have our double red flag, which stay out of the water, uh, which historically we only fly during during the actual hurricanes. Um, and then we have our purple flag for dangerous marine life. More often than not, we're flying that for jellyfish and man of war. Okay. Okay. Wait, at what point do you guys decide uh, what color flag you go with that day? Is it every, that morning? Every single morning. Yeah. Okay. The, the ship that comes on that day looks at the water. They take in consideration what happened the day or two prior. Um, yeah. what's coming, swell conditions. They look at all that and they make that determination every morning. Okay. And so 
we I went to the beach last weekend and it was it was a, the surf it was on the increase we had those lateral currents we had the rip currents we had everything going on but then there was also some jellyfish in the water do we are those still out there floating around uh we have you know we've had a few we probably are going to see um some this weekend so be prepared for that uh we um the best thing to do uh, you can bring white vinegar with you um, or you can flag one of our lifeguards down in a truck or go to that, uh, if you're in front of that lifeguard tower like you should be, uh, they have vinegar on their tower. And, um, you know, it's a simple, um, it's a simple uh, procedure. We just pour vinegar on your sting. Um, a lot of times that helps. Um, so it's, it's um, just be prepared for those. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's something we deal with very commonly. Actually, this year to date, since January, we've treated over 2,000 jellyfish things. Most, wow. most of them are very minor. Um, we always tell people to, to things to watch for, and we've talked about this before. If you're allergic to animal stings like bees or ants, there's a good chance you, you're going to be allergic to a jellyfish thing. So if you have a bad reaction or if you're prescribed a, an EpiPen, uh, an auto injector for a bee sting, there's a good chance you're going to have that similar reaction to a jellyfish thing. Things to watch for is if your throat starts closing up, if you get hives around your chest, um, mostly, most time it's just extremely painful. Uh, and then it goes away usually within maybe 15 or 20 yeah, minutes. It's, it's, a, it's a 15 minutes. But um, yeah, like like uh, Captain Miller was saying, it's the allergic reaction is very dangerous, but that's very rare. Uh, most people don't have an allergic reaction to a sting. It's just a, a painful. So and it usually subsides after about 15 minutes. Um, and there's no real time or season for the jellyfish or man of war. They're just kind of at the mercy of the winds and the currents. So when we have a strong onshore wind for a few days, we tend to see them more. And don't itch it, right? Don't itch the stone. Yeah, don't scratch it. Don't rub it. Yeah, don't 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 scratch it with sand. Um, they usually say stay out of fresh water for a little bit. Because um, what happens, they're, they're leaving stinging cells on your skin. You can get fancy and say, you can call them nematocysts, but they're stinging cells on Ooh. your skin. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so when you rub it, you scratch it, you're going to actually uh, cause those stinging cells on your skin to rupture and, and cause it to sting more. Um, so you can take the, the callus part of your hand. If there's tentacles, you can take those off or a gloved hand. If you're going, if you, if you follow the beach app and you found that staff lifeguard tower and you're sitting in front of that, or we're all driving around our big red trucks, wave us down. We're, we're there to help. But again, you should be in front of that staff lifeguard <laughs> That's tower. That's it. Staff <laughs> lifeguard <laughs> tower. I'll take care of you right there on the right. spot. There's different levels to them too. You can get hit with like the little clear ones. They don't hurt yeah. too bad, but then there's also the. There's the cannonball world. ones that are fun to throw at people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We can't, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It, it, and we have the man of war, which of those looks like a purple Ziploc bag mm -hmm. on the, floor, yeah, the top the, of the water. The brighter they are, the uh, more uh, painful they usually are. <laughs> well, you said 2,000, you've treated 2,000 uh, jellyfish stings this year. We, like you said, we are kind of at the end of the beach season. You guys work year-round, but as far as the 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 big the big days or the big weekends, this is one of them. Where are we at? How, was, how did the season go? How many rescues did we perform? It, it, it's Go been ahead. good. Um, we've had uh, we pulled over twenty one hundred people out of the water this year. Wow, wow. Uh, which is which is relatively average for us. Um, actually, going into the season after uh, the disruption in the the sand, we thought we'd actually we I thought we'd have a bigger year. So uh, thankfully, we're here. But um, our lifeguards rather protect people. Uh, we had over a thousand medical calls. Um, like I said, we're, we're out there to, to, to help everyone. And, and even something as simple as you lock your keys in your car, you get stuck in the sand. We, we helped almost 1,500 people with, with vehicle issues this year. So you said that very nonchalantly, 2,100 people <laughs> uh, <laughs> saved from rip currents. And, and when you see it, um, it can happen so fast, right? Like it could just be a guard blows the whistle, goes out there, and it's done. It's done in three minutes. It, it is. If, if you're sitting there watching on the beach, you may not even realize it happened other than hearing that whistle. Uh, it's not like the movies where... They're screaming and flailing. It, um, it's, it's usually pretty quiet because a lot of times they may not realize they're in trouble or they'll be too tired to, to call for help or scream. And if they do call for help, they follow the Volusia County Beaches app and in front of that staff lifeguard tower. So the lifeguard sees them and goes and gets them. But yeah, it is. It's not like they have in the movies. It, it can be very quiet. Um, they're struggling and, and we'll spot that and we'll go out and get them and a good thing to remember too is when you are caught in a rip current don't panic it's not going to pull you underwater it's just going to pull you into deeper water there's a lot of things you can do you can float uh don't try to swim back through that rip current um that's when you get exhausted and uh if you're in front of that lifeguard they will see you in that rip current before uh, you even realize it 
Yeah, typically, adults or children in the recurrence. All everything. Over. Yeah, it's it, it, it's a it's uh, it doesn't uh, rip currents don't discriminate on who they're going to take out. There you go. That's a um, one thing to note, and I noticed this yesterday. Um, if people are out there on the beach at low tide in, in certain areas. Um, the way the water is moving right now, we've got a couple spots where the slough, so you've got your shoreline, then it gets a little deeper in the slough and then gets shallow at the sandbar. Um, that slough is very deep right now. Uh, so as you're walking out, it drops off very fast. So people need to be mindful of that because if you're not the best swimmer or you are just playing and you drop off, that's when people panic. That's what Deputy Chief Malfers is talking about. You could, you could get in trouble literally 10 or 15 feet from the shoreline. Um, it's, not this, it's not this huge drawn out drawn out endeavor um it can happen very fast and people need to be aware of that yeah and you can't really uh, plan for when panic sets in it happens quick you you, you, you don't know you could just step off the end of a sandbar and yeah. be in trouble i remember the first time i ever got in a situation like that when i was a kid it's burned into my brain and it was scary you can't you can't train for that type of stuff but it happens quick you save 2100 people um and it just that's an amazing stat i i mean i know you say nonchalantly because it's what you do every day and, and it's it's quick, but I appreciate that. I'm sure everybody who all 2,100 of those people and their families all appreciate that. So thank you all for, for what you do, for sure. We're going to take a quick break and we will be back with more Volusia Today. We are Volusia County Beach Safety. We're here to serve Volusia County's 47 miles of unique coastline. You know, Volusia County beaches. Yeah, those beaches but also these beaches. We have millions of visitors every year and we work around the clock to keep our beaches safe and beautiful. And, and you can help. Swim near a staff lifeguard tower. Pick up your trash. And fill holes. Identify, avoid, and escape rip currents. Please leave the beach cleaner than you found it. Look out for one another and keep an eye on kids, especially in the traffic lane and in the water. Pets are allowed at our two pet-friendly beaches, Lighthouse Point Park and Smyrna Dunes Park. If you see something, say something. A clean and safe beach guarantees fun in the sun for everyone. Thank you for doing your part to keep Volusia County beaches beautiful. See you at the beach! Make the most of your day at the beach. Download the Volusia County Beaches app today. Sign up for real-time notifications on vehicle ramp openings and closings. Find staff lifeguard towers. Get updates on tides and beach conditions. Plus, off-beach parking and coastal parks info. Volusia County Beaches app is available for your smart devices at the App Store and Google Play. We're back. We have A.J. Miller and Tammy Malfurst with Volusia County Beach Safety and Ocean Rescue in the studio with us. We're talking... Labor Day weekend, safety, everything you need to know. We talked a little bit about rip currents. We talked about some of the tools you all have to be prepared, the Volusia Beaches app, um, always swim in front of a staff lifeguard tower. And there's also live cams on the Volusia Beaches uh, YouTube channel, which are super helpful. You can see how packed the beach is, what the conditions are looking like. like. And for those surfers, it's free to see if the waves are good or not. Um, so there's other threats, though, at the beach, right? It's not just the rip currents. What are some of the other threats we can be Well, Michael, you had a question we were chatting on the break about. Well, you know, we, we've talked before about um, people who up in the dunes. Are there threats in the dunes with wildlife or dunes collapsing? There are actually one of the big things is um, we, we really urge people to stay out of the dunes, uh, mainly because those dunes and the vegetation on those dunes protect our barrier island. When we do get these big storms that come through, the reason we make it so well is we have this great dune system that's built up. Um, but as far as dangers, we, we, we kind of mentioned digging holes. Um, you can't dig holes in the beach, and, and, and there's a reason for that. Um, once you dig a hole, once you start getting deeper and deeper, um, there's a very big threat of that hole collapsing on you. Mm. Uh, we train for it on our, on our beaches. A, a lot of beaches throughout the nation train for it. Um, is this collapsed hole rescues because uh, if you're digging down and you get too deep, if you get deeper than that hole is wide, it's going to collapse on if you're in that. Um, so I know it's cool if the, if the sand's hard enough and try and find those dunes. People think it'd be cool to tunnel through them, but there's a good chance of those collapsing on you and causing a big problem. Okay. And other things that you dig holes um, in the sand, it really um, uh, affects the turtles nesting and also at night people walking and they could fall in those holes as well. So, you know, people like to build sandcastles, stuff like that. You know, just be careful. Fill all those holes back in. 
To me, most of my kids are um, are teenagers, so I try to not go to the beach with them. But <laughs> but, for, but for those families who have younger children, what should they watch out for? Um, yeah, if you bring a small child to the beach, you can opt for many of our areas that are no driving. Uh, and if you do bring a small child to the beach where there's driving, make sure you're always holding their hand whenever crossing that traffic lane. Uh, a couple more tips: uh, set up all your belongings on the water side of the traffic lane. Your tents, your coolers, your chairs, everything you're going to need for the day. Set it up on the water side that way it limits any children from trying to travel back and forth across that traffic lane okay yeah and there's not non-driving zones the the coastal division we had them in here last week um they've done a great job getting all those beach access points open so there's there's a lot of opportunity to park off beach and get to those less populated areas where there's not that threat of uh, cars driving by in that that traffic lane um mm-hmm. and that's been super nice and then you also mentioned the sea turtles we are we've had a record setting sea turtle nesting season and they're starting to hatch off right now yeah so we got to we got to be we got to be doing our part to help them along their journey right right yeah and that's why we have that established conservation zone so when you come to the beach and you park make sure you pay attention to those conservation posts and stay on the east side of those because those are there to protect the turtles for uh for nesting yeah and we're we're also rolling into washbacks washback season uh, uh i met with one of the washback bat was well, hard to say washback watchers uh, <laughs> say that three times fast yeah, right. uh, and they're the ones that go out there there's a, they're a volunteer organization they um turtle patrol goes out and drives in the morning we have those wash back watchers that go out and walk the beach uh looking for for hatchling sea turtles that have have emerged gone out um they spend the first part of their life in the gulf stream living that sargasm seaweed that stinky stuff that washes in every winter on our beaches be mindful of that because in the mornings if that if we have seaweed on the beach we can't open for driving. We have to, and, and Volusia County Beach mm-hmm. Safety will patrol those areas by ATV looking for any sea turtles. Once we clear that area, we'll be open for driving. So if you're coming down to the beach and you check the beaches app, a good chance you'll see it'll say closed for sea turtles. That means we're checking that area before we can open. So give us a little time. We want to make sure the beach is clear of any sea turtles so there's no impact between the t- sea turtles and uh, vehicles driving on the beach. That, yeah, that's a good reminder for everyone that uh, Turtle Patrol does. Uh, they travel the beach every single morning and they check for any new nests. And we can't open, uh, like Captain Miller was saying, we can't open until everything is clear. Uh, and we know that there's no nests that need to be relocated or anything like that. Tell me, who tells you you can't open? Uh, who tells us? Uh-huh. Uh, Turtle Patrol. The, the, well, the, <laughs> but where, where, where does the directive really come from? The federal government, The right? federal government, yeah. yeah we're yeah. under uh, federal guidelines, uh, and we it's very strict. And um, if, if we see a new nest, they have to make sure all those new nests are marked off before we can let any vehicles on the beach. Yeah, I think it's important to know that it's, that's not Daytona or, uh, you know, or Volusia County down there doing that. Right, yeah, that's the federal, yeah, government. It's not us saying, no, you can't get on. It's Correct. It's federal yeah. guidelines yeah. that we, we, we operate by, which those guidelines allow us to have driving, driving on the beach. Also very important to know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of entities down there working to make sure our beach is pristine and we're following those guidelines um, and make sure everything's good before it even opens up in the morning. That's every day. It's a big collaboration. It a lot, is. A lot of hands into it. It's awesome. And uh, I don't think a lot of people even know how much stuff y'all do. I was fortunate enough to do a ride along with Beach Safety. Uh, I did a full day with them getting some video for uh, social media messaging purposes. And the first thing we did during the day, they opened the beach up and we were riding along making sure he was uh, uh, he was saying how important it was to make sure everybody's parking in the correct way right off the bat because that that dictates how the rest of the day is going to go there, there are there, there's a lot of like like uh deputy chief malfer said when you park on the beach there's that line of uh natural four by four poles on the sand you got to park on the east side of that between those poles and the traffic lane that's the parking area the reason it's so important to get that set early is if people are out of area they're going to and here's the thing if you don't get your parking spot and you park in the wrong spot everyone else is going to fill in and when it's your time to move you're not going to have a parking spot also, you're actually not allowed to, to lay out in that parking area. Um, one, we want to get more people on the beach, but also it's a safety issue. Uh, if I'm laying next to my car and you pull in and you don't see me and I'm impacted by your vehicle, that's kind of a problem. So we're all about safety on Volusia County beaches. So even the small things that, that seem kind of minor, it, it, they're there for a reason to keep everyone safe and make sure everyone goes home and enjoys their day. 
Hey, Jay, can you talk to me? Uh, this is new to me. Something about the windows uh, having to be rolled down. Oh yeah, we uh, driving is uh, you know because we have a driving beach. You have to be very careful. You have to have your driver's side window down when you're driving mm-hmm. on the beach. Uh, that's very important. Your headlights on. Also, uh, the speed limit is 10 miles an hour, and that is radar enforced. Well, so it, pe- people ask, why your window? Well, there's a lot going on. Your sensory overload, if you come down to the beach for the first time and you're trying to drive, we have people come down that have never done it. And they're like, oh my God, how do you drive around this beach for 12 hours a day? I couldn't do it. But one extra thing, having that window down, you're going to be able to hear. So yeah. like, like, uh, like Tammy said, if you have small children, make sure you're holding their hand when they cross the road. If they get out, you hear a parent scream, somebody's running across, you're going to hear that and you're going to be able to react to it. So that's why you got to have your window rolled down. Yeah, it's uh, it's very you know it's very important to hear what's going on around you, especially on the beach and especially a crowded beach like that. I mean, that's the public's playground, right? So you need to have uh, your window down, headlights on, driving ten miles an hour. Please pay attention because it is like Captain Miller said, it's hard to pay attention when you get down there. You start looking at the water and everything else. Well, and, and Tammy said it, ten miles an hour on the beach. That's the max. You don't have to go that. There's you're you're on vacation mode. You're on the beach. Right. Enjoy it. You don't have to match that speed limit if you want to go a little slower i'm not going to get mad at you and enjoy your drive down the beach so you're safe what happens if i uh, violate any of those three tammy oh uh, that's a county ordinance violation okay. you can be written a citation so uh you know we we hate to do that and you know um we don't do the law enforcement um responsibilities anymore but uh, the sheriff's office is down there enforcing all those laws okay we're going to take a quick break and uh run the last commercial and we'll be back with more volusia today We are Volusia County Beach Safety. We're here to serve Volusia County's 47 miles of unique coastline. You know, Volusia County beaches. Yeah, those beaches. But also these beaches. We have millions of visitors every year, and we work around the clock to keep our beaches safe and beautiful. And you can help. Swim near a staff lifeguard tower. Pick up your trash and fill holes. Identify, avoid, and escape rip currents. Please leave the beach cleaner than you found it. There we go. Look out for one another and keep an eye on kids, especially near the traffic lane and in the water. Pets are allowed at our two pet-friendly beaches, Lighthouse Point Park and Smyrna Dunes Park. If you see something, say something. A clean and safe beach guarantees fun in the sun for everyone. Thank you for doing your part to keep Volusia County beaches beautiful. See you at the beach! Make the most of your day at the beach. Download the Volusia County Beaches app today. Sign up for real-time notifications on vehicle ramp openings and closings. Find staff lifeguard towers. Get updates on tides and beach conditions. Plus, off-beach parking and coastal parks info. Volusia County Beaches app is available for your smart devices at the App Store and Google Play. All right, we're back. We got about a minute left. Uh, we got Captain A.J. Miller and Deputy Director Tammy Malfurst in the studio. 30 seconds. What are the last messages that we have for people going into Labor Day weekend? Uh, swim in front of those staff lifeguard towers and have fun. A.J.? Yeah, enjoy it. Um, drive safe, be safe, hydrate, no alcohol, clean up after yourself, leave only footprints, and please enjoy the beautiful weekend we're going to have. That's, that's amazing. Michael? Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> Welcome to Volusia County, yeah, th- Mike. <laughs> Dave, seriously, thank you for hosting uh, the first show. I appreciate it. Did I do all right? Yeah, you did, yeah, yeah, you did all right. Well, what can I do better? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he told you a little turn less these, eye contact. Turn these lights off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quit making that intense eye contact with me. <laughs> <laughs> Heading into my weekend. It makes me nervous. <laughs> No, well, we uh, we appreciate everything y'all do for us. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work with y'all, and it's just amazing to see everything y'all do. Download the Volusia Beaches app. Check out the County of Volusia YouTube live channel. And you know what? Just beach smart this Labor Day weekend. We'll see you out there. If you have a comment about Volusia today, or if there is a topic you would like to hear featured, please contact Volusia County Community Information.